Hi, I'm Mike. Not every day on the ranch is a winner. Some seem to kind of get away from you. And there's not really much you can do about it. However, if you choose to learn from the bad, then it's not a total loss, as our first calf of the year is born on the ranch. And we turn a bad day into a good lesson on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said that we can complain because the rose bushes have thorns, or we can rejoice because the thorn bushes have roses. It's really how you look at it. And like most things, there's a good side and a bad side. We wake up every day hoping that the good outweighs the bad. And that really depends on what you consider to be good. If you have to win the lottery for it to be a good day, you're gonna have a lot of bad ones. However, if you're happy to know that your family is by your side and that you go to work every day with a mission to help yourself and help others, and you have friends that support you in doing that, it makes it a lot harder to have a bad day. Bad things can happen, but deciding how much you let them weigh you down is what keeps you going. Trust me, I know this. This week has been a total disaster. I started out our time together this week putting together a gate and building some new pipe fence. Now that project is slated to take two videos, which I'm glad I did because it turned into a total nightmare. If I could have, I would have just let it lay, but the fence needs built and by the time the next project list is due in your hands on Tuesday, you'll have your fence. This morning, however, took my day down a different road. While I was still thinking about fence and the issues I have to deal with there, I went out to feed cows. Process was completely normal, fed the cows without an issue, but one cow was off by herself. And this time of year, that usually means one thing, calving. We aren't scheduled to begin calving until April 2nd, but as I've said before, we can start at any time. So over the past few weeks, we've been keeping an eye, pretty close eye on the cows, uh, keeping a lookout for suspicious behavior, like hanging out alone and not coming in for breakfast. The culprit this time is number 41. She's an older cow, over 10 years old, and has been on the ranch her entire life. She's had a calf every single year, and this year she's due to have her calf on April 15th, a little over a month from now. A calf born a month early is a problem, as their lungs may not fully be developed yet. And even though we were feeding, we stop everything to deal with her. She's only about a quarter mile from the barn, and bringing her in shouldn't be much of a problem. We can see that the bag that the calf is in is exposed and the bag has broken. Usually cows will first present with an intact bag of fluid. Once that breaks, we have about two hours to have her have her calf or we need to help her. I don't know how long ago her bag broke. Therefore, we better get her into the barn and examine her and determine if we have to pull the calf. After leading her in part of the way with the tractor, it's time to play a little bit of hardball and go and get the gator and move her in the rest of the way. She is currently, right now, enclosed in an area that's about three acres, but we need to bring her all the way into the corrals. Because our pipe fence isn't done, we really only have one way to bring her in, and that's through our lower gate. But after trying to move her in that direction, it's obvious she wants to go somewhere else. Across the pasture, she moves and ends up next to her calf. Born only a short time ago, her calf is obviously premature. With the absence of hair in places, we can see that the coat has not finished coming in. It's almost positive her lungs were not fully developed enough to even take her first breath. Calves born an entire month early rarely survive. They are underdeveloped and much too small. They have no fat on their bodies to protect them from even a slight chill. While we don't know why she had her calf early, there are some factors that can be considered. Heat stress is one of the biggest causes of premature birth, but I think we can rule that out. It's only about 25 degrees out here. Nutritional deficiencies can play a role, of course, but we know we've been feeding them, and the most likely culprit here is actually the age of the cow. Also, the cloudy eyes of the calf indicate that the calf has been dead for several hours. Since I know there was no calf here a few hours ago when I checked him, I can gather that the calf died in utero and was stillborn. The only way we can know for sure is to submit tissue samples and sometimes the entire calf to the university diagnostic lab. 
However, that's not encouraged unless abortion rates are higher than 2%. The loss of a calf is a loss for the ranch. Mom, who was fed and cared for for an entire year, didn't produce a calf. That calf was income for the ranch, and there's no way to recover that money. We don't have calf insurance, if there even is such a thing, and there are no subsidies in ranching to offset crop loss. The only thing we can do is watch, wait, and hope that nobody else loses a calf and treat mom. Number 41 seems to be in pretty good shape. She's protective of her calf, and we use that instinct to move her into the corral where she can be by her calf for a little while. She can eat, she can relax, and most importantly, she can say goodbye to her calf. While she does that, we can run back out and see where she was when we found her and make sure there aren't any other issues. It is a bit of a surprise that she left her calf clear down by the barn to come all the way out in the pasture where we can see that she laid and bled. I'm guessing after giving birth, or maybe before, there really is no way of telling. Part of treating mom is keeping a close eye on her for the next few days. She will stay in the corral, and we wanna make sure that she passes all of the afterbirth and placenta and she cleans out completely. If that doesn't happen in the next day or so, we're gonna to have to examine her and make sure we don't have another issue to deal with. She's not having any more contractions. She wasn't found to have twins at ultrasounding, but she's nowhere out of the woodwork yet. We will stay with her and uh, keep her under a close eye. As for her calf, she will be buried and taken care of respectfully. Losing your first calf of the season is actually more of a common occurrence than you may think. It's been a few years since we've had to deal with it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen and it's never a good experience. Calving season is a time of life on the ranch, and every one of these cows are depending on us to be there and help them during this part of their lives and their calves' lives on the ranch. There's nothing we can do to change what has already happened. We move on, we continue, and we care about every animal out here. I know that number 41 is gonna have a rough few days, but I also know that I'll do whatever I can do to help her and all of her friends out there. It's the beginning of a very long season on the ranch, one where we don't know what's gonna happen from day to day, and every day can be, well, can be turned upside down by just one cow. It's the time of year that we love and a time of year that we hate, but we know it's our life. It's chosen us. Thanks for coming along today. Please subscribe as we move forward. Catch me on Tuesday and hopefully I finish a fence and don't throw a major tantrum while doing it. And on Sunday, if you'd like, you can catch both Aaron and I live during our weekly live stream on Beyond the Ranch. Until then, I hope you have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.